Is the new Google TV streamer 4K worth it? Well, stick around because I'm going to go over some of the older devices that this replaces. And I'm also going to, at the end, set this up and configure it so you can see what that process looks like. So stick around and let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to discuss the new Google TV streamer 4K. I'm going to show you some of the devices that it's replacing and then we're going to get it set up. But don't forget, if you like this content, please hit that thumbs up because that tells the old YouTube algorithm that you are enjoying this content and I would really appreciate that. So Google came out with this not too long ago and they showed it during their IO conference. I was able to pre-order it before I went on vacation and it showed up while I was gone. So I ordered two of them, one for my bedroom and one for my living room. And so we're gonna see exactly what this device is all about. Now, I used to have the AT&T DirecTV stream service, which is basically just a streaming service like anything else, uh, but it was through AT&T. And I have since canceled that and we have moved to YouTube TV. So when we did that, I thought that getting an actual Google streaming device just made more sense than using some kind of third party component. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a worthy successor. So far, so good, because I actually hooked the one up in the bedroom because we needed a TV uh, streaming device there since I don't have that AT&T box anymore and as you'll see here towards the end of this when I actually get this connected the process of setting it up is seamless the picture quality is amazing and so far this has been a great device so we're going to unbox it kind of show you what it's got compare it to some other devices I'll go over some of the specifications of the device as well so uh, let's get to it so I do like Google's boxing uh, they usually make things pretty easy to, you know, unbox and get open. Okay, so as you see, this is what you get. You get the power adapter, you get the remote, you get the power cable, and of course you get the streaming device. And nice, compact, really clean looking components. It's nice to actually give you a power adapter because nowadays there's a lot of devices, they don't give you the actual power power block itself they just give you the cable so it's nice to actually have that and this cable is actually a really long cable and uh, so it should be more than long enough one thing I'll say is they've changed this remote and I have a previous version here that goes with this Google TV dongle this is their original device and I'll be honest with you, I was not happy or real impressed with this device at all. It seemed to have a lot of like crashing issues and it was really slow. And so I wasn't, I didn't use it all that much to be honest with you. So let's compare the remotes here real quick. So you can see on this one here, it has the um, assistant button where you can you know, click it to bring up the Google Assistant. It's got a back button. It's got a Netflix, you know, button, the quick access to Netflix. And of course it has a quick YouTube button, power button. It's kind of a back button. And of course you have the uh, mute button. And here is the biggest difference. On here they have the volume buttons on the side. As you can see on the new one, the volume buttons are in the middle. There is nothing on the sides, but it still has the Netflix button. It still has a YouTube button. Uh, you still have your mute, you still have your microphone where you can do use the Google Assistant, and of course the back home. Now, here's another key feature of this remote, and I can tell you from connecting it downstairs, this is actually really helpful, and I'm going to show you when I connect it here towards the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. But this button right here is a programmable button. This button allows you to customize it to open a specific application, and gives you a lot more functionality as far as how you're going to use your remote and i really really like that downstairs i have it where it opens up my cameras and i'm probably going to do the same thing up here because it'd be nice to be able to um, you know, see what's going on so that's a pretty nice feature uh, but other than that it's basically the same it's a little bit taller because of how they have the volume buttons but um, other than that it's pretty much identical and I mean it works really well again I have the one downstairs connected and it's just uh, it's so far it's been awesome honestly and the fact that we're now using YouTube TV as our 
source of TV. The integration is like seamless. I mean, it's such a better experience on this device. So let's look at the actual device itself. Oh, another nice thing is they give you a battery. So this is the unit here. Nice, thin, unobtrusive, looks real good. It's got a nice finish to it. And here's another cool feature that they added is a actual gigabit ethernet port. And you would think that just makes like, you know, perfect sense, but their previous devices, anything that had an ethernet port, it was only a 10, 100 port, which why would you even do that? That's ridiculous. So key feature HDMI now supports 2.1. You have the gigabit ethernet port. And of course you have the uh, USB-C power key upgrades. It's now four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage space, which is much bigger than previous devices. It's going to allow you to store a lot more information, install a lot more apps, and you're just not going to have to worry about running out of space. I know in the previous version, um, I think this is either eight or 16, and I was constantly having to like clear cache and uninstall apps I didn't use, and it was kind of ridiculous. The wireless is now 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. This supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, HDR10 Plus, and HLG now, which is phenomenal. I mean, there's so many HDR capabilities that this device has, much better than any of their other devices. I personally like the fact that this is like a desktop unit and not one of these hanging dongles. I, I never really did like that. Uh, it made sense, obviously, for the size of those other devices, but because they kept it so small, I think it limited them as to the type of hardware they could use. So obviously you did not get a very good performing device. So I really, really like this redesign. I like the size. It looks good, feels good. It's unobtrusive. And with Google Gemini now, they actually have incorporated Google Gemini into this device. It can give you like overviews of movies and shows and uh, so far, it's worked really good. So I want to show you some of the other devices that they had. I, I already showed you the this dongle here. Way back before that, they had just Chromecast devices. And this was a Chromecast Ultra. And this was capable of 4K, but I found this to be definitely more powerful than some of the previous ones, but still not up to par with what I would want. And... One thing that frustrated me is I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to wire it so I can have better connection because the wireless on that device just never seemed to work. So they sold you this power adapter here that has an Ethernet port on it. But again, this Ethernet port is a 10100 port. So you can never get over 100 megs per second, even though you might have a gigabit switch and or router. And of course, my house has been on gigabit Ethernet for a long time. So to have a 10100 port is simply ridiculous. Now the device that I used at my TV downstairs, which is going to be replaced by this second um, Google TV streamer, was this Nvidia Shield Pro streaming box. And this runs Android TV. It's their pro version, it's supposed to be really powerful. But I can tell you over the last, I don't know, six months, I've been having a lot of issues with this, like locking up where I've had to unplug it, plug it back up. I've actually reset it just to kind of make sure it wasn't a software issue. It does have HDMI, Ethernet, USB on the back, and it does 4K as well. But like I say, over the last, I don't know, six months or a year, it just has not been performing. Yeah, keep in mind, this device here was released in 2019. You know, yeah, they've had some... Uh, software updates but not a lot but this device is old and they're still selling it like as a brand new device and it's basically the exact same thing that you could buy back in 2019 so while it's okay I found it to be giving me a lot of issues and I wanted to replace it plus my wife did not like the remote the remote is like a little triangle remote and she, <laughs> she didn't like it so you know you got to make sure the wife's happy but yeah, I didn't care for its performance here lately. It's just creating a lot of problems. And I even had some issues where like I would try to go buy a movie and it wouldn't allow me to get logged in correctly. So then I would go to my phone. I could buy the movie and sometimes it would show up and sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, there are times where I bought the movie on my phone, 
but when I went to you know play it on here which is connected to my google account it was making me buy the movie again because it didn't show that it was actually in my account so again some really weird issues with this thing and so i just got tired of it and when they came out with this and we moved over to youtube tv to me it just made sense to replace both these units and like i said i've already connected the one in the bedroom and it's worked phenomenal we haven't had no issues with it it's fast it's smooth the picture quality is fantastic, and so it's it's been really, really nice. Okay, so I realized I can't actually connect the device to a monitor and still be able to do screen recording <laughs> because obviously the monitor is not connected anymore. So uh, that's okay. I have connected it over here to this television. Uh, I've got to plug it up real quick. You can see it down there sitting on the uh, table. I'm gonna go plug it up and we'll get started. So right now it's detecting the device and once it gets finished booting, it'll actually show on screen. Okay, so as you can see, it's now wanting me to hit the two buttons at the very top there, which would be the home and the back button. So we're gonna hit those. It basically is pairing the remote to the actual streamer. There it goes, it's paired. So sorry, that's uh, a little out of focus there, but uh, it basically just asking you for language. So we're gonna do English, of course it's United States. So now I already have the Google Home app open. So all I need to do is I don't even need to scan that QR code. I just need to go to devices. As you can see here, I'm actually doing a screen recording and I'm gonna hit add and I'm gonna say Google Nest our home so it's right now my phone is looking for that device and it'll find it here in a second and it'll go through the pairing process see Google TV streamer found yes I'll say now I can scan that QR code basically makes sure that I'm actually setting up the correct device. So it's it's nice that they do that, but you don't have to scan it ahead of time. I gotta do is open the app and let the app find the device and then scan it after the fact. So agree, yes. Um, so I'm gonna put, even though I'm in the bonus room, you know, setting this up, it's actually gonna be on my living room TV. So that's where I'm going to select the room. And actually I need to switch this Wi-Fi. Because the router I have is capable of 6G, but this is not. It's 5G. Uh, so I need to connect to this network here in order to finish this setup. Because you have to be on the same network as the device. So now we're going to choose that. I'm going to say next. Yes, remember password. So now my phone is sending the information to the streaming box. Now it's connected. So now it's got to go through an update. So I'm going to turn on app updates and everything, make sure it's all automatic. So I'm going to say yes, continue, allow. So basically one of the nice thing too about this device is you can add like your Prime TV, you can add ESPN. Uh, there's a lot of these other like third party streaming services that you can connect. And so basically when you search for a program, it's going to search all of your streaming services, not just Google TV, which I think is awesome. So I see voice matches on. Yes. And so here where it says choose your apps, you can see on the phone, uh, I'm going to choose YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, YouTube Music, Paramount Plus, Prime Video, Hulu, YouTube TV. We have Peacock. I don't need TikTok on my TV, <laughs> Discovery Plus, and all right, that looks like it for now. Another nice thing too is that you can set the uh, ambient mode. So like if it goes into, like if you're not watching anything, you can have it use one of your Google Photos albums in your account to show pictures, which I think is awesome. It looks great. And I happen to have a album that I use for my Google Hubs. Oh, there it is, Google Hub Display. So again, that's a folder I use on my Google Hubs. 
Um, so I use that on the TVs as well. Okay, so now you can see here in my Google Home, actually, let me show you. Um, so bedroom TV, you can see bedroom streamer. That is what my wife is watching right now in the bedroom. And so let's go to living room, living room TV. So now you see where it says Google TV 4135. <laughs> as soon as it comes back up over here, I will change the name of that to living room streamer. So I know, which that works out perfect. So I got all this done just in time where it finished its update. So that's great. Another nice thing too is, especially with Samsung TVs, I find that these remotes will just like automatically pair themselves. They'll, they'll, they know what type of television is connected to the streamer, which I think is awesome because then you don't have to worry about like two different remotes or trying to program this. It's really a seamless integration. I don't know how they do it, but I'm glad they do because it makes things way easier. So let's go ahead and turn the volume up. And there you have it. It's that easy. It's ready to go. Now, of course, here on the camera, it's not looking as crisp as it is actually in person because of the camera, but it looks really fantastic on the television. So you can come over here to the settings area. So the HDMI CEC, I always leave enabled because I want the TV to turn on and off and the device to turn on and off together makes it much easier. And of course your remote, this tells you what your battery level is and you see it's 99%. You can add other remotes and other USB or excuse me, other Bluetooth devices. Uh, but let's get this other button set up here. So down here at the bottom right, that little star button that you see right there by my thumb is that programmable button. All right, so I'm gonna rename that to living room streamer. Living room TV, that's where it's placed, yes. Podcasting, yes. I've already got an ambient mode set up. And I like the weather on, time shown, yes. Device information, hi, don't need that. So I had to reboot it to get Google Home to show up because it, after it gets through doing its initial install and update, you have to come back in here and do that. Uh, so I got it rebooted. So now it says Google Home. I know you can't see it on TV, sorry. We're going to create a shortcut. So go to settings to change. So now when I click the button, so this is really cool. So it lets you put your Google home panel as the shortcut. You know, after you get through all the updates, you reboot it, it boots back up, you choose Google home. And so now it lets me do the home panel. And what's cool is I can say, you know, doorbell notification on TV. I have the slider. Yes. Home panel. I have yes. And I'm going to save that. So as you can see here, it's now bringing up where I can have my cameras. I can adjust my lighting. I can adjust my climate. So let's say I want to, uh, let's say I want to look at my driveway camera. I just come out here, click on it. And then it changes to my driveway. I mean, how awesome is that? Here's my garage. It's going to be messy. But well, that's the garage. Again, it's kind of blown out on the video because you know it's the the video camera is not capturing the image correctly. All right, so there's uh, the kids' room, which uh, when our babies come, our little grandbabies, you know, we can watch them at night. So I just think that is amazing that it gives you that capability where you can have you know, quick single button access to control all your stuff. So you don't even need your phone in your hand. You just need to be able to come here to your home panel. I can control whatever lights I want to turn on or off. And, you know, I can adjust my thermostats if I want to. It, it's just, I mean, the integration is amazing. I, I just love it. So that's it. I mean, that's, it's literally that easy to get it set up. You know, once it goes through, it does all its updates, you reboot it, come back in. And now I'm ready to watch TV right now. It's just, it's awesome. This so far, like I say, downstairs in our bedroom, it's been a fantastic device. It's just worked flawlessly without any issues at all. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take this downstairs um, and we will get it connected um, as soon as I'm done. Okay, so as you saw, that was a pretty easy setup. And actually, I should have just done it on this camera because 
you can see the TV on here much better than you could on the other uh, camera. But I wanted a more straight on shot, but that's okay. So, but while I have this here, I want to go back in here to this home button here so you can see uh, what I was talking about as far as the cameras and such go. It's again, it's such a seamless integration. Uh, it's it's awesome so i can absolutely 100 percent oh look i already got a notification that our dryer is done drying because <laughs> all of our samsung devices our samsung tv my smart things it's all connected so on every one of our samsung tvs it lets us know like dryer washer refrigerator all that stuff it's pretty awesome this the smart home technology these days with these different components is to me, it's such a huge convenience and time saver. And that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, it, smart home is supposed to be a convenience and a time saver. And uh, some people say, oh, that's lazy. But um, no, it's not. It's just about having ease of access and functionality. So this is going to go in the kids' room since I don't really use it much anymore. This won't get used again probably ever. This won't get used ever. This has been in the drawer for a long time, but I wanted to show you what the previous version is. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a fantastic uh, upgrade. And I, I definitely think that if you have an older streaming device or maybe you don't have one at all, definitely pick up the Google streaming TV 4K device because it's phenomenal. It's awesome. So let me know if you have any questions, comments down in the comments section. I'm going to put links down in the description area with links to the streamer. Uh, I'm going to give you a recommended HDMI cable that I like to use. They're really nice braided cables. Uh, they're 2.1 capable. And you want to make sure that you're using a 2.1 HDMI cable because this has 2.1 HDMI on the back of it. That way you get the actual, you know, proper video signal. Uh, and it's going to look as good as it should look. So click the link, go check it out. You know, definitely want to watch this video right here on another awesome Nest device. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.